Hi everyone, welcome back to Art Lessons with Rossi. Today we're going to be working on a drawing of this onion, garlic, and potato. And we'll be working with graphite pencils and our goal is to create value using line. So we will be exploring hatching, cross hatching, uh, stippling, and cross contour uh, to depict these objects. But before we can start with value, we need to plan out our composition. We do that using thumbnails, and today I'll be introducing how to use the rule of thirds in order to really set how these objects are going to sit on your paper. I will also be exploring and talking about planner analysis and how to um, isolate highlights and shadows on your forms to really get a volumetric feeling of those forms. And then after that, we will be working on developing value within our drawing. Today I'll be using graphite pencils, uh, a range of graphite pencils from 2H um, to 6B. I'll be using erasers, like a kneaded eraser that you need to pull apart and warm up, a plastic eraser, a gum eraser, and I also have another plastic eraser for graphite. You can also use your pink eraser. Um, and I've already started a couple of thumbnails. I'm working on a rectangular sheet of paper. Uh, the paper for this is right behind this newsprint. And I wanna make sure that the thumbnails, thumbnails I'm creating are also rectangular because our thumbnail should be a zoomed out version of what we're going to do on the paper itself. Now I want to use the rule of thirds in order to choose how these objects are going to sit on my picture plane. The rule of thirds divides the picture plane into three equal vertical and horizontal sections, basically creating a tic-tac-toe board. And I'm going to do that with each of my thumbnails I'm trying to be as uh, precise as possible, but it's okay if they're not absolutely perfect. The, the point is to get an idea of that composition. I am, again, working uh, loosely, gesturally, and quickly. So I have that tic-tac-toe board on each of these thumbnails. The way that the rule of thirds works is that um, we find it aesthetically pleasing if our compositions are not symmetric. If you put something straight smack in the middle, um, our brain really doesn't like it. Instead, we like to create a composition that has movement and flow. We do that by creating an asymmetric composition and also concentrating on diagonals. Today, we're just gonna be talking about um, the asymmetric part of that composition using rule of thirds. To use the rule of thirds, these sections, this tic-tac-toe board that is being created, we want to put an area of emphasis on one of these cross hairs. So really thinking about if you were to place um, uh, an object or a subject on one of these, and that was the emphasis in your thumbnail, uh, what would happen to the rest of the composition? So I'm looking at my onion and my uh, garlic and potato. And the thing that when I think about this uh, first thumbnail with the composition in the upper corner, I'm really looking at that garlic and how interesting it is right here in the roots. So if this section was those roots of my garlic and I placed the garlic around that, what would happen to the rest of my objects? They would start to fall off of the picture plane, which is actually a, quite an interesting and dynamic way to zoom into a part of that composition and give me an area of focus. So now let's think, what can we do to um, place something else on this upper corner uh, of the next thumbnail? And remember, thumbnails are gestural. They should only take you, um, uh, you know, under a minute, 30 seconds to a minute most. So I'm going to use the garlic again, but by maybe zooming out just a little bit, because I felt like I was pretty close uh, zoomed in on this one. So zooming out just a little bit and thinking about what would happen to the potato. Where would I see that? 
and then how much of the onion would I then continue to see as that form zooms out just a little bit. So now let's go to the lower corner. What if instead of the garlic, I concentrated on the roots of that onion? And again, maybe I'm going to actually zoom out even a little bit more. And I love those roots. I just find them to be so interesting. So if I zoomed out just a little bit more, and look, I even get to activate this uh, third with the garlic. And then my potato is still going to fall off the composition, which is okay. What you never want to do is you never want to squish an object or a subject to somehow fit it into the composition. Uh, instead, if I wanted more of that potato, I can say, you know, I really wish that that potato was in there. What can I do to make it fit? I can change the size of my thumbnail. And I can think, okay, maybe just make it a little bit bigger or maybe even making it horizontal. So you can make those kind of changes directly on your paper, really easy to do in this scale when it's just a little thumbnail. Hmm, let's see, how about this one? You know what, I don't have one. I actually find that my composition and the focus of my composition, again, I think will be really interesting with that onion here. And this um, version that I created as a horizontal over this vertical, maybe I get to try to replicate it here and zoom out just a little bit like I did in this piece to see if uh, adding more of the objects would give me a more interesting or, or um, compelling composition while I'm exploring things um, and how they're going to fit on my paper. So here's that one. Now let's think about if the focus is in that upper corner. Again, I'm going to concentrate on that garlic. And again, it's going to uh, zoom in a little bit, which I don't mind at all. And it allows me to have a whole bunch more potato in there. And let's just try the, the last one. I'm just thinking about what I want to concentrate on. And I'm going to go with that garlic again. So because my subject isn't moving or changing, all the thumbnails are pretty similar to each other, but there are very distinct differences on what something looks like when it's totally zoomed in and vertical versus zoomed out and horizontal. And the more I look at these, the more I feel like maybe this um, composition is the one that I happen to really uh, like and want to continue with. So, so I think that this is the one that I will take into my next video. So I've chosen this thumbnail as the one that I want to use while creating this composition. So this is going to be how I lay out my, um, my, uh, the objects on my page. I'm going to take this thumbnail. I'm going to translate it in the upper corner of the paper. And I'm going to put the rule of thirds right on it. And um, I'm going to sketch this thumbnail, but I'm actually going to uh, do it back from the still life. I don't want to draw my thumb, this specific thumbnail. I don't want to look at this thumbnail and draw it back on here. Instead, I want to re-reference my, my subjects, the onion, garlic, and potato, while knowing that I'm going to put the garlic in the separate corner. So I'm going to uh, go back to my still life and really think about, like, where's that garlic? What does it look like? I'm still working, you know, quickly and gesturally, but thinking about where's the where's the form? What's the space like in between these objects? How much of the back of that do I see? And then where are the roots of the garlic itself? Thinking a little bit about cross contour, which we'll do more of in a second. So here's my thumbnail in the upper corner. Now that I have my thumbnail, I need to translate 
that same, uh, all that information onto my page. And so here I'm going to use the rule of thirds again. I'm going to put them right on my paper, breaking up the paper into three equal parts vertically, three equal parts horizontally, creating that checkerboard on top of my paper. And um, I'm just going to eyeball these. I feel like that's pretty good. I prefer you guys not to use the ruler because these are just a guide. So um, don't overthink them. Just really try to make sure that they're pretty equal. You can measure with your pencil to see if they're the right size. So now that I have that, I'm going to reference how I uh, created the thumbnail and put it on my paper. So for example, from the top of my page, I know that this third, you know, like I know that this is going to be that center of the garlic, but from here to here, I can think, well, that's where that garlic is starting. And it's going to be in from the side and it's going to come to about halfway on um, this middle third. And the bottom of that garlic is probably going to go somewhere to there. I know that my onion is going to still be in this upper corner. My potato is almost on that first third. So that thumbnail really gives me an idea of how these objects are actually going to fit on our page. Uh, and that's really what we want from that thumbnail to give us a guide of how large certain objects are going to be on our page. So now let's go um, back to our still life and let's do some drawing. Um, first, uh, something to think about, you can always use sighting and measure whether you have the height and width of something correctly. So for example, you can take the width of that garlic and compare it to its height. You can take the width of that garlic and say, how many times does the garlic go into the rest of the composition? What I'm trying to show, how many times does the height of the garlic go into the rest of the composition, etc. I'm going to start a little bit more gesturally than that first, just plotting out where things are. And then I will um, start to really um, measure and think about how certain objects are uh, corresponding to each other. So I'm starting first with a loose drawing that I know I will continue to correct. Never get um, overly attached to that first drawing. You want to make adjustments um, like really the first thing that you put down is uh, again a guide for yourself it is not the drawing that you end up with you will make changes you really want the general shape uh, so knowing that you know this uh, garlic shape is pretty uh, organic that this onion shape is basically just a circle or a sphere we'll turn it into a sphere really looking at the negative space between these objects. Here the camera view and uh, my view are just slightly different from each other. So um, if you notice uh, differences, it's because I'm sitting just to the uh, right of the camera, so my view is a little bit different. Uh, thinking about where I see shadows. Thinking about where the roots of that uh, garlic are. And that I see a little bit of that, oh, sorry, onion, of the onion art, and I see a little bit of the um, little sprout of that onion on the other side. So that's, um, that's what I see, and that's me using my thumbnail to block out where all these forms are. Now I can start, uh, I can do some sighting and really think about, is this what I see? Again, because I'm to the uh, side of the um, still life, uh, my sighting does not correspond directly with the camera view, but I can take the height of the garlic and say how many, how, what happens if I take the height of the garlic 
And what do I see if I put that height of the garlic on the, the bottom? So this is the height of the garlic. It's just a little bit smaller than my pencil. And what I see is that one garlic height down, I basically see the roots of the onion corresponding with that. So I'm pretty happy with, with that placement. So now that I have um, this gestural, um, I have the composition, I have the thumbnail, I have the composition, I've used the rule of thirds. Um, now I can start to use planner analysis. So now I can start to use planner analysis and contour line. So again, I'm going to start with the garlic and I'm really going to start thinking about what I see in terms of contour. So I see, I'm looking at how the garlic is sloping. I'm thinking about when it starts to slope down, when it starts to slope to the right, when it starts to bulge back out, how it enters the form and comes into the form where I see one of those clothes. And I'm going to go all the way around the form, but I want to make sure that I'm not outlining. So I don't want to create an outline of this form. Instead, I'm uh, looking at all the edges, um, all the um, pattern and form that, that that object has. I'm not just making an outline, I'm creating a contour line. I'm going to go up this clothes, and I think that when I drew it last, it was just a little bit more bulbous. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit. Here's this clothes. And then here, I notice that the papery skin of the onion is actually sticking out. I'm going to draw some of that papery skin and do the contour line for that. I can't really see a difference here of where that papery skin ends up, but I can see that there's a little bit of it here. And then the roots, I'm not going to really uh, play with yet because they're so complicated. I'm actually going to handle those roots using value. But uh, in order for me to know where the value is supposed to go on this object, I'm going to break up this form a little bit further, thinking about planner analysis, thinking ah, this cloth gets darker in this section. And then it gets darker a little bit here. I see a shadow here. I see a highlight in this area. And then it's in shadow in this area. There's a deeper shadow lower here. And I want each of those sections where I see shadows and highlights to be separated within their own little parameter. So basically, I need to uh, give them the space where they exist. The shadow exists here. The shadow exists here, etc. So this is my garlic using planner analysis. Let's move on to the, uh, the onion. So I'm going to use the uh, contour line for the onion as well. Um, I'm making sure to kind of pulse my line. I don't want to create an outline that is all even all the way around. Rather, I can have a lot of control. I can make a deeper, darker line where I actually see the value of the onion being darker. And then I can make a lighter line where I see the line of the value of the onion to be lighter, darker, lighter. And I can kind of change the pressure of my pencil in order to uh, emphasize where certain value is um, getting lighter and darker. I am going to work a little bit on the roots. And again, I don't want to do all of them. I'm just going to draw their general shape, the papery skin of the uh, onion itself, thinking about where that breaks and where I see like a little line going all the way up. And now for this object, I really want to start concentrating on where the highlights and shadows are. I see a highlight here at the very uh, top of that onion. I see another one a little bit lower. Uh, and there's a whole lot of color um, and value changes in these areas that are creating this cross contour of the onion. We're going to have a lot of fun making those um, 
the value in that using um, hatching and cross hatching. I'm thinking about how this side of the onion gets darker and then right under the garlic there's there's a shadow and then there's another shadow that's a little bit uh, right underneath that garlic again. It gets a little bit lighter in here. So there's the planner analysis for the onion. And let's do the same with the potato. So I'm thinking about what I see here in between the onion and the, um, excuse me, the garlic and the potato and how bulbous and uh, uneven that potato is. I'm looking at the shadows that it's casting, um, that the garlic is casting onto the potato and how they continue back. And now I'm also going to show the difference in where the skin uh, color of the potato gets lighter and then gets darker. And also there's a section here where it kind of goes in and that is also getting darker. There's a little eye. This area gets darker too. Um, again, I see this little negative space in between them. I know that that's not totally visible on the camera, but I actually see the tabletop that it's sitting on. So I see the yellow cloth and then that brown board that I have in between. And I'm going to put in the shadows of these objects. And there's really two shadows. There's this, the cast shadow right underneath the object. And then there's another secondary shadow um, a little bit further away from it. It's also a cast shadow, but is um, much lighter than the one in front, uh, the one close to the object itself. And maybe, I'm not sure if I'll get time to uh, play with some of these creases that are um, on the cloth that they're sitting on, but I can kind of put them in. Okay, so now we have done the planner analysis for these objects. I also want to go back into the onion and really create the cross contour of that onion. The onion is very much um, like allows us to see that cross contour. So we see lines of growth from the roots going all the way to that shoot. And we can see how they're actually curving around that object and really helps us to understand um, that curvature of, uh, of the onion itself in which direction it's going, how they look almost vertical when they're um, right straight uh, moving away from us. So as that line is moving away from us, it looks like it's vertical. And then as it's curving, but we're seeing it from the side, we, um, we get that feeling like it's sloping to the right and moving away from us in that direction and towards that uh, back part of the onion itself. So I'm just going to throw some of these in. It's going to help that form look even more volumetric. And I can do the same thing on the garlic because it also has these growth lines that are showing us its cross contour. So I can think about where those are. We see them more in the shadows than in the highlights because, uh, of course, this object is white. So we're seeing some of those cross contour lines going away from the viewer and around each of those clothes. And we don't really need that for the potato. Again, we're going to handle the potato in a slightly different way. Now we're going to start adding value. And we're going to create value using all of our uh, graphite pencils. And we're going to be using hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and uh, cross contour. And specifically, I want us to use hatching and cross hatching in the onion, cross contour in the garlic, and stippling in the potato. And each of those actually lend themselves very well to each of these objects. So being able to capture um, the form of that object using hatching, cross hatching, or cross contour. Uh, we'll probably also put a little bit of cross contour on the onion itself. And in terms of cross contour, what I just did making these lines is cross contour, but we're also going to use it as a value. 
So the first thing I want to do is um, I'm going to go with my B pencil. So kind of like a nice soft mid pencil. And um, I'm going to start to think about where is the mid tone for this uh, onion. And really, I see the mid tone, the value that's right in the middle, somewhere in here, in this section. Uh, I have lighter areas here. I have darker areas right on the side, but this part on the top, a part on the bottom, a part on the side here, they're all kind of in that mid tone. And it's really important that we make marks that help us to emphasize the idea of this volumetric um, object. So as I start using hatching and cross hatching, I'm going to follow the cross contours that I see in this direction of the onion, as well as the implied lines that I can think about the onion having in the other direction. We didn't draw those in, we did that on the pair, but here we can really intellectually keep that in mind and make sure we're following them uh, so that the form itself continues to be volumetric. So first, let's think about creating these cross contours that we see. When we're doing hatching and cross hatching, you want to make 45 degree angles or you want to make an angled line that is paired next to each other. And we're going to follow that shape of the onion and we're going to let that cross contour guide us as to how that line is going to change in terms of slope. So we're going to go in one direction. And again, I'm starting to create the midtone for this. And I can keep that um, those lines pretty wide and further apart. And um, it also is helpful if you put something under your hand so that you don't smear your entire drawing. So I'm going to grab something to put under my hand. So it's nice to have something under your hand as you're doing this hatching and cross hatching, if you're working on an easel or if you're also working um, on flat on a piece of uh, on a table. And I'm going to allow myself to even go into uh, this area that's darker in value because um, I'm creating the midtone. I know that this area here is going to get darker, but I can start to establish the value for the whole thing and then um, go in and go darker. You guys had value scales for homework so you um, know what it's like to create, um, to use your V pencil for example to establish one value and then to hatch it and cross hatch it uh, to, for that value to get deeper and darker. And something that I would suggest um, is that you never allow your hand to make a bigger mark than about a half an inch. So as I plant my hand or I put my pinky and I'm uh, tripoding my hand and working a little bit far, further away from it, I'm always working at about a half inch, somewhere where it's comfortable for me to make these kind of hatching and cross hatching, hatching marks by planting my pencil as far away from my hand as it would comfortably go and then pulling in I don't want to see big marks like this. They will flatten out your form. So make sure that you're working at a comfortable um, 45 degree, or sorry, at an angle, but in these smaller uh, sections that are about half an inch. They can sometimes be a little bit bigger, but I don't want to see anything like that's as big as that three inch mark. And as you guys can see, I am working my way around this onion, really thinking about its uh, cross contour. And I even wonder if I can't slope my lines just a little bit more in here than I already have. I feel like you could even start to really curve around in the other direction. And basically I'm making, I'm going to just emphasize it here. Again, I'm working my way around the cross contour and it's basically going to look something like this, where I am 
um, making almost vertical marks, and then they start to change direction, they start to change direction again, uh, going all the way around that onion. And why does uh, hatching and cross-hatching work so well for this onion? Uh, well, if you look at the onion itself, and I'll just take this apart and show you guys for a second, and hopefully I can put my still life back together. But if you look at the edge of the onion, yes, it's circular, but really it's created out of these little growth ridges. So in, in many ways, it's actually doing this, uh, where it's making these little lines that are going all the way around that onion. So that's what I'm, uh, I feel like we'll be able to capture that form if, um, if I use the hatching and cross hatching for that section. So once I've developed my mid-tone, which I'm, you know, basically there in this section, I'm actually gonna start going in the other direction. So I'm going to hatch and I'm going to cross hatch. This is um, a drawing that takes a lot of time. This is not a fast drawing. You have to cover all of these areas. They're pretty big areas. So you have to kind of be in it for the long haul and allow yourself to get in here and work on process. In these drawings, we are not smearing and we are not smudging. Instead, we're allowing the pencil to blend the graphite. And that allows for a really nice sharp line that uh, has the drawing feeling nice and crisp. While as we start to smear and smudge, um, we really kind of take the life out of the drawing. And as I've mentioned before, we're getting to charcoal. Uh, we'll be using charcoal in no time. And when we work with charcoal, we will blend, we will blend all the time. And, um, and it is so fun to do that. But charcoal really looks amazing when it's blended. Graphite doesn't. Uh, graphite ends up being really flat. So uh, just to show you, I kind of developed my midtone. And as I mentioned, I want this area to get deeper and darker. I'm going to go to a softer pencil. So let me grab my 2B pencil or my 4B pencil. And I'm going to hatch and cross hatch again uh, in that darker area, allowing that value to build up, still using the cross contour and making sure that, that my um, marks are following the form. Drawings have a memory. So whatever marks you made uh, to begin with, sometimes no matter how much we cover them up with something that uh, has a direction in, in in a, in a different direction, uh, sometimes they still somehow show. And I don't know what it is. It just, um, something changes when we put down our materials, maybe to, to the paper itself. So you want to make sure that you are working in the direction that's going to emphasize the idea of volume rather than making big marks that are going to flatten out the space. And that those would be vertical and horizontal marks. So you want to make sure that you're following that curve all the way around. And as you can see, we're starting to develop that value. So for the onion, we're going to use hatching and cross hatching. For the garlic, we're going to use cross contour. So cross contour uh, is uh, what we've been talking about here, how we're creating that cross contour of the onion following its form all the way around. But when we use it as a value, we're going to emphasize that cross contour um, right following the form of the garlic. So let's say I start here. I see that there's um, an area that's just a little bit darker and I'm following this curve, but I'm going to make longer curved lines rather than short uh, 45 degree angle lines or lines that are at an angle. Here I'm actually going to let my line curve and extend in order to show the um, onion or excuse me, the garlic itself. And I, can, I think that I see the value really well on this side. 
where I'm going to take these little areas and I'm going to curve that line around showing the cross contour of the garlic and therefore developing that value. Now, as we're working, we want to make sure that uh, as we build up the value of the garlic, we uh, don't want to make it too dark because it is a white object. And if we push the value of the dark garlic a lot, then we actually need to work further in the onion so that that onion starts to look darker as well. So cross contour, so hatching, cross hatching, and then cross contour is gonna be curved lines that are creating that value. So let's go to the potato. In the potato, I want you to use stippling. So as you remember in our value scale, we don't stipple like this. Super tedious, um, really not a good way to make a park with a graphite pencil. You can use that kind of mark with a pen. It works well with a pen, with a graphite pencil, not so much. So instead, we're going to make short marks. Now those short marks still need to follow the cross contour of that potato. So where that potato flattens out, our mark should be uh, more horizontal. Where it starts to curve, our mark should be more vertical in uh, different directions. And you know, either to the right or to the left, etc. So you're going to make small marks in order to get that potato. Now you don't need to cover the potato completely. Like the a big part of the onion is going to be this even midtone. But for the for the potato, I would say that using uh, stippling sparingly is actually going to be more successful than if we just covered the entire thing in one value. So really look at where that potato gets darker, where the shadows of that, um, what objects are casting off that uh, potato, also where the skin tone of that potato changes, and really start to use stippling sparingly in order to capture that. So stippling, we're going to mark, make marks that are, that are short, and we can also hatch them like we did with our cross hatching I want to see stippling. Um, for the roots themselves, stippling also works really well for that section. And in that case, I would use a little bit more control and really think about how can I, instead of drawing the light part of the roots, instead um, draw all the shadowy parts underneath or the parts that you see in between things and start to uh, capture those forms. And then that stipple mark is going to allow you to have this feeling of texture that suits itself so well for that root. And at times you're going to pull it out and create that little root. That little root even has a little shadow, so you can add all that in. Uh, at times you might need to even use some, use some cross hatching and hatching in order to capture that but that's going to be a really successful way for us to get those uh, marks inside of those objects. So hatching and cross hatching, cross contour and stippling for the uh, onion, garlic and potato. For the rest of the video, I'm going to do a time lapse of the drawing uh, itself. So I'm going to complete this drawing in full value and you can see how I think through all the highlights on the onion, what to avoid, keeping the garlic white, adding nice texture on that potato. So keep watching for that time lapse. 